What up, y'all? It's Brother Ali. Checking out hip hop since 1987. Stay right here. Click on the good stuff. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. All right, it's your boy E Money, chilling with a vet in the game, brother Ali. We out here in Philly now. Um, it's good to see you, my man. Yeah. Definitely good to see you. Good to be seen. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, for those who don't know, you've been in the game for a minute, mm -hmm. pretty much since 1998. Dropped your first studio album, 2000. Well, I dropped a like a demo tape kind of thing. What they would call a mixtape now. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know okay. I mean? They would just, you know, so my first like studio thing was 2003, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, pretty much for our fans who don't know, maybe you can give them a rundown of the beginning of your career till now in 2013. Well, we started, you know, the independent model of doing things based on heavily on shows, doing, you know, touring and dealing directly with fans, meeting them, making music that touches them, all that kind of stuff. That stuff is really popular now. It's the business model now. But when we started doing that in the late 90s, that wasn't a popular thing to do. And so... You know, we were able to, um, just by necessity, we were able to, you know, carve a lot of those paths out um, so that that's the, so that, you know, when the Wiz Khalifas and the Macklemore's and, the, you know, Mac Miller's and all those guys kind of, you know, they, they, they took a course very similar to ours. And I like to think that, you know, us doing that and, you know, creating these relationships with promoters, creating relationships, you know, with booking agents and within the industry and stuff. And a lot of them, had the same booking agent and managers that were with us when we were building the thing. So, you know, now when you say, well, I'm doing the independent thing, everybody respects that. Mm -hmm. but when we started out, it was like, what do you mean? So, oh, so you rap for your friends. It's like, no, I have a, and you know, and Tech Nine had a lot to do with that too. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so I would say, you know, we came up doing it like that for a long, long time. I was on the road for six to 10 months out of every year. Um, from 2002 until 2010, so I did eight solid years like that. And then I took a break in 2011. Mm -hmm. And in 2012, I came back out last year. And so um, I'm just kind of like getting my feet back mm -hmm. wet and mm -hmm. touring again. You now, know? what was the what was the cause of the, uh, for the break or whatever? Um, when you're on stage, that when you're on stage more and you're away more than you're at home being your real self, I didn't like what it was doing to me spiritually and mentally. I think it's it's really important that um, we recognize that whatever we believe in, our esteem or you know fame, fame's an illusion. It's, illusion. it's not real. People think it's real, and that's what makes it real. It's like race isn't real, yeah, yeah. but racism is very real because yeah, yeah. people make it real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like a soul is a soul, and because of the body we come here in and the ideas that keep the society together, we have you know all this stuff. So. Um, but I, I got to a point where I was starting to believe, the not the hype, but I was starting to believe that the guy on stage was too was too much of me. Mm -hmm. that, that I was just like this thing that gets on stage and then, um, you know, my personal life was in bad shape. So during that year that I was touring 10 months, my dad died. Um, a dear friend of ours that we started a label with, Idea, died. Um, and you know, me and my wife were having trouble, and so I would like fly home and go to a funeral for somebody that's like really close to me, and 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 I was mad that I had to cancel a show to be there, and then I would go right back to tour a day or two later, and I'd be on stage like shaking my ass again, like you know. And after a while, I started realizing like you know I didn't. It was weird. Like I didn't cry when my dad died. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was too busy. Yeah. And and um. You know, I'm just like, okay, let's just get through this funeral. You know what I mean? This is weird. That, that does weird things to you. Yeah. It's not natural. And people, like, you know, look at that. I'm just experiencing such a small, small sliver of it. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, but it's like, man, it doesn't matter if the whole world thinks you're somebody. If the people that you're around every day treat you like you're more than just a person, yeah. it gets in your head, man. It's yeah. weird, you know. And so I just didn't want to, uh, I'm very careful about my soul, 
more so than anything. Yeah. 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 And so now I'm kind of having to rebuild because after I was gone for a while, people got out of the habit of coming to my shows and things mm -hmm. like that. So now I'm now I'm out here trying to rebuild again. You know. Okay. But I'm ten years older. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. different when you know I started when I was you know like twenty two or something like that. And I've been in my mid thirties. It's like man, it's the different. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now when you <clears throat> speak of letting fame kind of take control of your life. You are not the average rapper. Like, your content really speaks on, in, in my opinion, in a lot of people's opinion, positive things. You, you touch on a lot of political issues. Do you think you want to really get that message across to the people? Could have kind of, you know, contributed to you staying on tour as much, you know, yeah. and just wanting to spread that message? Man, and it was a lot less, it was a lot less that, because, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I, I've always known I'm not famous, you know what I mean? Like, there are people that are famous. I know people that are famous. Absolutely, yeah. Like, can't leave your house famous. Mm -hmm. I've always known that. But, yeah, part of it was that, you know, the music is like, I try to put in, I make my music about things that I want to define my life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Biggie made Ready to Die. And then what? Life after death. Right. Yeah. But then he died. Yeah, yeah, okay. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That was for you. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I feel like the, the things that we put in our music become we have to go live that like we put an album out I'm touring that album for six or eight or nine or ten months I'm performing those songs every day that's and all the interviews and everything the music that you make is what your life is really about and if it's not what you're already living you will start living it if you get busy doing this thing so I tried to make music that is, that's like healthy for me even and healthy for the people listening to it so I don't like to call music positive or negative, but it's like, is this healthy? Mm -hmm. Is this a sustainable life that you can live a long time, a long, happy life? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the only thing that, like, when I talk to to rappers, I'm like, the shit you're saying, it's not healthy for you. Yeah. Because, like, th you know, you go out here and perform this stuff every night, talking about Molly and haters and, you know, bitch pop that ass and all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This and that. And it's like... Man, you're never gonna be loved like that. Who's gonna, who's gonna love you? Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna love yourself? What are you telling yourself when you when you you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You do these things to your body and like. So, part of the problem was that people were like, "You are a prophet" or something like that. Mm. I started believing that. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like the real me is a dirty motherfucker like anybody else. You know what I mean? I'm just I just want good, and I'm so I'm talking about that. You know what mm. I mean? Cause man, we all know like you know even outwardly, if outwardly we can do all good things, yeah. But we know what the thoughts we're having, yeah. That, that aren't always, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's funny you say that. Ironically, a lot of rappers say they didn't catch their first case till after they got famous, or they get in more trouble yeah. after they get famous because of you know the lifestyle they choose to live. Yeah. Well, part of that too is is the um, I. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of speaking from a really privileged place from two perspectives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The first one being that I was independent, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. I didn't have a company, you know, giving, throwing me millions of dollars and telling me what the people want. Nobody told me, nobody gave me millions and nobody told me what the people yeah. want. The people gave me a few hundred racks, yeah. and that was great, you yeah. know what I mean? But, but, so I didn't have these other people in it, sitting behind a desk telling me like, oh, you need to make street shit, you need to, but people don't want to hear that, blah, 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 blah. You kind of had that freedom. Had, yeah, exactly, yeah. absolutely had that freedom. But also, um, the race thing, man, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a different posture that you can have, like with, you know, white people love to, white people love themselves mm -hmm. very much, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so anytime there's somebody that looks like them, doing something, especially that's not considered a white thing to do. So if there's a white guy that can play basketball, they think he's the greatest mm -hmm. basketball player. They think Ron Jeremy had the biggest dig ever. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like if it's if it's a white person doing something, you know what I mean? Not to say that they don't really appreciate the music too, because yeah. they really, really do. Um, but so I had a bunch of fans, I still have a bunch of fans that aren't fans of hip hop. You know what I mean? They're fans of, of or they're just fans of this like circle of, of rappers. And so, you know, if, if I was trying to break into an urban market talking about the things I'm talking about, mm -hmm. it doesn't work on record. Mm -hmm. If I can get on stage, like I've, I've opened for some of the grimiest people in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and if I get on stage yeah. and get to look everybody in the eye and say my shit, then they're like, okay, I respect that. But um, 
in terms of it, you know, on record, somebody just hearing like this song about this sad dude, the, the whatever, you know what I mean, or this revolution shit. I want to hear all that shit, you know. So I, two ways that I, that I had it, like advantages that not a, not everybody has. Yeah. You know what I mean. The artists such as yourself who may not be backpack or hipster, you can consider as political either way. Mm -hmm. Not mainstream. <clears throat> I feel like you guys get a bad rap. Because, like you said, you're a normal person. You commit sins and wrongs or whatever, but you might rap about something positive and then you're tagged as a hypocrite. Right. Do you ever feel that, that that's unfair pressure? Like Nas always talked about that. I, I can make a song about positive young lady and a strip club chick. Like, mm -hmm. that's the reality of life. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like, you, you know, you're put up against that wall? I, mean, I think Nas has done a pretty good job of, of, of it, you know. What I, mean? mm -hmm. there, I think, um, you know, there are there are people though, like there are people that that, you know, live the in in they're in they're in the street, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And so they make their music about the street. There are also guys that are aware of the street, or even if they are, but they pimp that element of themselves. Mm -hmm. They exaggerate it. Mm -hmm. They're pimping their story. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know what I mean? And. Um, that's not that's not good. No matter what it is, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Because you you're not just that, you know. So somebody's just like I'm the hardest dude ever, and blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I clap them things and you know got bodies and blah 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 blah. At some point, you know somebody's gonna have footage of you being robbed, and you're yeah. not gonna be clapping a damn thing. You're just gonna hope that it gets done without you getting pissed at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know. Because nobody is all one thing. Nobody is mm -hmm. Superman. And the same thing too on the other side. That if you if you if you pimp your positivity, somebody you know will catch you on some. Somebody yeah, will yeah, catch yeah. you getting a lap dance and the girl's sixteen or like you know what politicians. I mean? Politicians, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. the, the Republicans catch it all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Democrats are worse though, because the Democrats act like they're helping. They act like they're helping the hood. They act like they're helping mm -hmm. whatever. But they. They profit just as much as anybody else. Yeah, yeah. Like when, when the hood takes a beating, they're getting paid. Everybody's getting paid, for sure. Everybody's getting paid. Shout my hip hop since Shout 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com.